All right, so this is the Ninja Never Dull knife system. And this whole system right here claims that if you use this system, then your kitchen knives will never go dull. So we're gonna test that out. All right, so here's, here's how this thing works. It's basically just a regular, like there's, you know, there's nothing special about the knives. They're just regular old knives. But what makes this thing unique is it has a built-in sharpener in the knife block and it doesn't, I couldn't find anywhere exactly what it is. To me, it looks just like a ceramic wheel, which is what I'm assuming it is. So all you would do is whenever your knife gets dull, you are supposed to stick your knife inside of here. I'm just going my finger stuck. And then move this back and forth uh, 10 times. And then that is supposed to sharpen your knife. And they claim that if you do this 10 times every two weeks, that these knives will stay sharp for 10 years. Obviously, I don't have 10 years to test that. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a representative from like each knife size. So we're gonna do the chef's knife. We'll do this one, which is like a, I don't know, slicer or whatever. And then we'll do one of the steak knives. Since this is, uh, gonna be meant for, you know, just like base. This isn't really a sharpener. It's more of something to hone your knives And that's why you you know, you do it every two weeks so it can maintain a sharp edge not necessarily Create a sharp edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two different sets of tests One I'm gonna run these knives through some like very light tasks just like something normal stuff that would simulate just light use We're gonna test how sharp they are do that and then test them again, see how much of the edge we've lost, run them through here, see uh, see if we get any edge back, and then we are going to just absolutely abuse them really bad, and then run them through the sharpener, and then uh, see, how, see how much it can restore the edge. Let's get started. And just in case you don't already know, what we're doing here is we're just measuring the force that it takes to break this little filament. And that tells us how sharp our knives are. So first we're going to test the chef's knife. Now keep in mind that a typical razor blade is about 200 on this scale. Ooh, 175. All right, so the chef's knife is sharper than a razor blade. Next we'll do this, whatever we call this one. Oh, that one is not uh, not nearly as sharp at 300. Let's uh, let's test that again, just to make sure that there's not like a some type of defect from maybe manufacturing or I don't know, just something, because that seems very 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 high. Oh wow, that's even even worse, 355. Okay, so this one, I guess out of the box, just does not come that sharp. Next up, steak knife. Oh, 170. So, the chef knife is 175, so this is basically the same sharpness as that. All right, so I came back to this one, and I don't know how well you can see it. You can kind of see it on camera. It's all, oh, you can, you can really see it good there. Like there, there, and there. It's like it's like I don't know if it's a burr or if it's just like a defect from manufacturing or what. But you can tell the edge isn't quite like there's just something off about the edge. So if I move the edge up and go back farther on the knife, it's much sharper. So you can see it's a 190. So it's actually not, you know, at least like. Through here, it's sharp, and then up here, I guess it's kind of dull or whatever. Uh, I don't know. So we'll see. So we've measured all of our knives on the sharpness tester, and we have like a number that tells us how sharp they are, but that doesn't really like demonstrate how sharp they are. So let's use something physical that we can actually see the sharpness. So let's just take a tomato, and let's try to do that tomato thing where they kind of just like make a real thin slice while it sits still. All right, let's see. I don't know if we can do it with the skin on there. Oh, we absolutely can. 
Oh, it's going to move a little bit. Let me just take that off. All right. Oh, it's moving a little bit. I don't know if this is the I don't know if this is the knife to blame or if this is the tomato to blame. I think it's the tomato to blame because this is kind of Let's maybe get deep inside of here. Ah, I mean, we can make thin slices, obviously, almost paper thin. I don't think, I have another tomato. I don't think the knife is to really blame for this. These tomatoes are like really, really, really dense. The last time I did this, I had better tomatoes. Oh, it almost worked. Okay, well you can still see. We can still make, you know, paper thin slices. Maybe a smaller knife might do a better job. Come on. Oh yeah. That was a pretty thick slice. I can I can feel how much how much sharper this is. Like with every single stroke, I can just feel it like just slight just chewing right through the tomato. Two can also make super paper thin slices. Now this one, this is the knife that kind of you know the sharpness is kind of kind of iffy. This is like, is that the, is that the tomato that's having this problem? Yeah, this one, I think this knife just isn't sharp enough to really, this <laughs> is, yeah, I don't, I just don't think this knife is really, wow, I can, I can feel a significant difference in how much, how much more dull this knife is. Yeah, I mean, it, I can still make them a little bit thin, but not nearly as thin as the other ones. And I can feel, like whenever I go to like slice into this, I can feel how much extra pressure I have to try to put into it to like try to make it cut. Whereas like with this one, just like the weight of it, just like moving it forward just makes it wanna just slice right through, just like a hot knife through butter. This one, you kind of have to like, like work with it and put more pressure behind it. So the sharpness difference is definitely Definitely evident up at the tip where those like defects or whatever are, are gonna play a big role. So we've sliced our tomato with these knives. That's, you know, not really gonna do a whole lot as far as like usage is concerned. So I have this piece of uh, oak and this is gonna represent like our, a cutting board. And I'm just gonna drag the knives across this, say like 10 times with like medium pressure, just something to simulate like a cutting board. And, uh, and then we'll check them and see what kind of what kind of damage we've done. Oh, that's really that like I can really feel it trying to slice into the wood. That's gonna dull us down pretty good. That one didn't feel like it really got dull at all. It just kept felt like, felt like it just kept slicing in deeper and deeper. So that'll be interesting. So let's see what kind of damage we've done. Chef's knife up first. We started off at 175. See where we are now. Okay. 465. Not horrible, but that's a lot of damage for just 10 swipes on a piece of hardwood. This one was what, like 300 and then I Remeasured it at I think 190. Oh, okay, 430. Now our steak knife started off at 170. Four twenty-five. That's pretty crazy. All of these are basically within I mean just like 10 or 15 grams of each other. So let's test out this sharpening thing. So you're supposed to just Alright, I guess that's good enough. 
So you're supposed to do this 10 times. Oh, you can hear it. That makes a horrible sound. That was 10. And it definitely, it doesn't look like anything happened. <laughs> From the sound of it though, it sounded like it was doing something. Like it sounded like it was grinding really hard in the beginning. Then by the 10th stroke, it just kind of sounded like it was just, you know, riding or, you know, just scraping across it, but not really. Something I'm noticing that's kind of annoying is that you have to go, like whenever you push it back, whenever you push it down, you have to go all the way down. Like I can't just go here and then go back up because it doesn't work. You go all the way down, click it, and then pull it back up. That looks pretty good. I showed you guys up close as like little defect looking things. I don't see those anymore. see a difference with these. All right, I guess we'll see if we sharpened them or, or what happened. So our chef's knife went from 175 out of the box. We dulled it to 465. And now with our sharpener, see where we brought it back to. <laughs> 350. Okay, this one was 190 to 430. Now we are at, wow, 275. And our steak knife was pretty much the same as the chef knife, 170 to 425. Now we are gonna be, wow, all the way back down to 180. So all of our knives pretty much, they gained a lot of sharpness back, especially our steak knife, it, you know, it was just 10 away from being completely back to stock. So, I mean, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, let's see how, if it still cuts a tomato the same. Let's see if we can just glide right through this. Ah, uh, this tomato is kind of thick. Mm. Is it the tomato or is it the knife? Uh, I wasn't having this problem before. This is the same tomato I used before. Hmm. I can still cut them. I can still cut really thin slices, I'm sure. Oh, uh, yeah, kind of. You know, it showed up uh, on the scale being sharp, being almost as sharp as it was to begin with. But I'm not seeing that kind of, yeah. I'm not seeing that kind of result here. Maybe the factory edge and the edge that the like the little wheel puts on. Maybe, maybe it's like a different type of edge or something. Yeah, I don't really. I know the scale says that it should be just about as sharp as it was to begin with. I just do not think that that's the case. Actually, since the steak knife is one that is one that we have, you know, duplicates of, let's try one of the brand new ones. See if it can do it. No, it's having the exact same problems. Let's just let's try a different tomato. Uh, man, we get like halfway. Let's see if maybe now, if we can like. Make it like suction to the table or something. Hmm. I don't know. That just doesn't feel like new. Still, I mean, it's still definitely sharp. It just doesn't feel like new. This one's new. I really think it's this tomato. 
You know what? That that cut felt exactly the same. I think this tomato just really sucks for what I'm trying to do. Alright, so that one's really, really good. This <laughs> This is just ridiculous. Let's just see if we can make a thin slice. Yeah. You can make thin slices. This one takes a lot more pressure and you gotta like do a lot more sawing back and forth. But it will do it. Wow. I can feel a significant difference. This one feels, the chef knife feels way more dull than it, really either one of those. I feel like I've got to put way more pressure on it. Like you can see I'm pushing on it, it's not even cut through the skin yet. It's still not cut through the skin, it's sliding away from me. There we go, then it, then it slides in. Yeah, this has taken a ton more effort to push. I was looking at both of these knives, like I was trying to figure out why this one, uh, you know, didn't really do a whole lot and this one was restored almost back to normal. And whenever I look at them, really the only thing that I can tell is that I think the steak knives are sharpened at a different angle than this. So maybe the wheel isn't as effective on this. I mean, other than that, that's the only thing I, that I can see. And this one looks to be like it's sharpened at the same angle as the chef's knife. So it is time for destruction. We need to absolutely just destroy these blades and see if that sharpener can bring them back. Because, I mean, after all, it says that, that they'll never get dull. So. Oh yeah, that's like, that, that feels like a butter knife. Oh yeah, butter knife. There we go. Now we're nice and destroyed. That's what we want. So I suspect that this should be somewhere around a thousand. Maybe over a thousand. All right, 1200. Not too bad. This one's probably gonna be even worse. Oh wow, that's not even. That didn't even cut it. That literally just pulled the thing out of the clip. This one might be so bad, I don't know if we can even really measure it. Okay, finally it actually cut it. 2,245. We have a long way to go. Wow, only a thousand. All right, so I'm going to save you guys the pain and suffering of watching me just swipe this thing back and forth. I'm gonna put each one of these in here and I'm gonna swipe it. How about we do this? I'll swipe it 10 times, like the manual suggests, and then after that, I'll probably do it 40 more times to make it a total of 50, and then we'll compare the differences and, and see, what, see, where we are, see where we're at. So I ended up passing each knife through the thing uh, 10 times, and then I also ran each knife through my double-sided strop. So these should be, these results should be as good as it's possibly gonna get. All right, 1120. So we gained some. Now this one was a real bad one. This one was the one that was 2245. Okay, that's actually very impressive. 1245, steak knife, it was 1090. Okay, somehow the steak knife got worse. All right, now I'm gonna run it through, like I said, 40, 50 times maybe, and then I'm gonna strop it again. Then we'll see if we can bring them back even more. But it, I mean, this thing just really doesn't look like it's gonna be able to bring back so, like extremely damaged edges, but 
you know, we'll try. All right, so I have swiped these 100 times a piece, and then I have stropped them. You can see, like there's still a chip there. The blade does not look good. So let's see where we're at. Eh, I mean, it helped a little bit. It went from 1120 to 935. I mean, with a hundred swipes, I would expect a little bit, you know, a little bit more than that. This one was at 1245 last time we checked. And somehow it's got duller. I don't know exactly how that works. Let's go with this one again. Just to confirm. Oh, okay. So that's probably more, more accurate. 750. Still very dull, but much better than we were to start off with. And also this means that there is some type of inconsistency in the blade. Because that one spot was like, well you can see these shiny spots are kind of where the edges are going to be messed up. So some of this is sharp and some of it isn't. Let's see where our steak knife is at. Our beloved steak knife. <laughs> 1320 is more than it was to begin with. I have some problems with the blade too. Oh yeah, you can kind of see right there. Right there. I might change the position of the blade. Maybe we'll hit a, a sharper spot. Maybe we can get a lower number. <laughs> Twelve thirty is still higher than what we started off with. I guess somehow by sharpening and stropping this one, we somehow made it more dull. All right. So in conclusion, we showed that with minor use and some minor wear, that this sharpening system that is built into this thing can actually restore. Uh, most of an edge. The, except for with the steak knife, for some reason it restored the edge really, really good. Um, it does a, a, a pretty decent job, you know? It kind of does what you would expect from something that's built in. What you would call it. This is like a, like a maintenance tool. This is something that you should be doing, that if you do this regularly and you keep up with your knife, then it'll stay sharp. This is to keep something, to keep something sharp, but this will not make something sharp. Once I destroyed the edge, I mean, some of them, you know, it made it a little bit sharper, but for the most part, it uh, doesn't really do a whole lot. So if you have this knife kit or you're gonna buy this knife kit, do not grind your knives on cinder blocks because this will not bring them back and you'll need something better. I think if the average person uses their knives normally and follows the instructions, I think it'd be great. And I think it'll maintain an edge just fine. I don't know about 10 years, but I think it'd do pretty good. So I know that I can't do a knife video without cutting a water bottle in half because you guys will riot. So let's use this fillet knife. And let's cut a water bottle. Put that there. This water, this might not work that great because for some reason all my water bottles have gotten like, I don't know, like squishy or something. Like the pressure's uh, out of them. We'll do the best we can. Oh, my aim was off. I'm gonna have to do it again. Oh no, better aim this time. Is this thing that sharp? That was crazy. I gotta do it again. See if we can cut it in half again. Oh no. Okay, well here's the good news. It did cut it in half again. The bad news is the water bottle went inside of a box that was important. Oh well, that is somebody else's problem. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one.